So in this one, what I'm going to do is go ahead and add in some dimensions. We'll add some text to the layouts. I'm going to adjust the material that we have on certain parts of it. And we'll, we'll just start creating some shapes. So this one, for example, is an outline of a table and chairs. And then I guess as a challenge, people can go ahead and create their own furniture layouts to their own specifications. So let's get started. So to begin, I'm going to right click over here and press Shift A and add a text. So if I come over to the Material tab, I'm going to click New and rename this to Black Text and press Enter. And for the color, I'm going to switch it to a black. OK, and if I come to the text options, I'm going to click in this font folder icon here and change the font type. So if I come to the font folder in my computer, I can take a look at some of these. And I really just want a nice, easy one to read for the moment. So I'm just going to pick this one and open font. OK, and that updates this font here. So if I tab into edit mode, I can press the backspace key to delete this text and I can put in my own one. So for this room, it's going to be a bathroom. Enter that and tab back to object mode. I'm also going to scale this down a little bit and I can position it. So I can just move it over, maybe something like this, maybe scale it down a little bit more. OK, and what I might do then is Shift D. And for this, I'm going to rename it then to the living room. And Shift D again. Drag this over here. And again, update the text. And this one is going to be the kitchen. So I'll do that for the rest of the rooms later. So what I'm going to do is select this wall section and I'm going to tab into edit mode. What I want to do is add an area to this. So I'm going to select the four verts on the corner of this room and press F. OK, now this fill is just temporary. We need it to get an area. So I'm going to come over here and get area. And I'm also going to click show. So I'm going to position this. So if I come down to the bottom of the property shelf here, I can expand this and I can adjust the area's position. So maybe something like this. I can also adjust the color. OK, so I might just take it to kind of a, a light gray. And with the face still selected, I'm going to press delete and choose faces. OK, so that just gets rid of that face we created. OK, the next thing I'm going to do is come back to object mode and I'm going to come over to the layer tab and switch on the cameras. I'm going to select my top camera here. Now, if I zoom out, I can see it's not selected because the triangle is not filled. So I'm going to press control zero and that will tab into that camera. And it's currently now the active camera. So I can give this a quick render to see how that's looking. So if I come over to display and over here on measure it, I can click render. OK, and that does that pretty quickly. So I'm just going to come over here and drag this up and check and see what the output is like. OK, so that's not looking too bad. There's a couple of things I want to do with this. The first was this wall. So the external and internal walls, I want to put a dark color on this. So if I come over to my t materials tab, I'm going to rename this to I'm going to call it heavy wall material. Press enter and over here then in the diffuse, I'm going to give this a black color. And if I select the window section, I'm going to hit the plus over here and I'm going to create this as a separate color. So I'm going to rename this to window material and press enter. And for this, I'm going to change it back to fully white. OK, and I'm also going to check in my world settings Okay, and just make sure that that's the same color there. OK, and that's going to be fine. And I'm going to give this another render. So if I come back to measure it and just hit render, that will update. And again, I'm just going to check this. So that's not looking too bad. There is one more thing I want to do with the material. So if I select the doors, I'm going to tab into edit mode. Just press A to deselect. I'm going to hover the mouse on these semicircles and press L. Select them all. I want to separate these by material. So select all of these. If I come over to the material tab, I'm going to add a new material slot here. And I'm going to choose the window material because it's white. I can hit the plus. I can just rename this then to door outline material. Press enter and I can hit the assign button. That now assigns that color to what we have selected in the viewport. 
So I'm going to tab back to object mode and give this a quick render and check this again. Okay, that's not looking too bad. I'm just going to drag this back down here. The other thing I might do is if I zoom in here, I'm going to right click. So I might add some furniture outlines. So if I press shift A, add a plane here and up here in the dimensions, I could give it an X length of 19, maybe 1980 millimeters, tab into the Y and maybe give this a thousand millimeters or a meter and just drag this up here. Now for the material, I'm going to go again with a white color. So I'm just going to pick one of the materials and just hit the plus and just rename this then to furniture. Okay, press enter. And if I press shift D, make a copy, I'm just going to right click, I'm going to scale this down a little bit, maybe scale it in the X. And this is just going to represent a chair. So if I scale it down a little bit more and press G, we're going to zoom in here, maybe scale it on the Y. So it's really just a representation. So what I might do is select this table here, shift S cursor to select it. Okay. I'm going to press the period key and switch to the 3d cursor. And I want to make a copy of this. So I'm going to press shift D right click and I'm going to mirror it across. So I'm going to press control M and press X and press enter. I can select the two of these, press shift D just right click again, mirror this across the Y axis. So control M Y and enter. So I might just select this now and press shift D just right click compress R and rotate it 90. I can press G X, just drag that over here maybe, and just drag it down. And again, shift D, just right click, control M, X, and enter. So that's just my table and chairs outline. You could go into more detail with these. And I might do something similar for the bathroom. I might add a bath and some, some other objects. Same with the kitchen. This area here is gonna be a garage. This area here is gonna be a utility. And we have a hallway and we have a stairs. The other thing we can do is if I select this stairs, I'm going to tab into edit mode. I'm also going to press the period key and just bring back the medium point. Press A once or twice. What I might do is hover the mouse on these and press P and do this for all of these sections. So just hover the mouse on each one, press P and separate them. and tab back to object mode. So if I deselect, that way we can see the outline on each step. So I'm gonna hit render, give this a quick render. And again, I can drag this up and have a look at the output. Okay, what I might do is change the material on this because that black is a little bit too much. So I'm just gonna choose furniture. And what I can do is just press B for box select, shift select this one. I can press control L to make links and just choose materials. So that way they all have the same material. And again, if I hit, give this a quick render and give a quick check to see how it's looking, that looks a lot better. Okay, we could also go in and add dimensions to certain rooms if you wanted to get positions. So if I zoom in here, select vertices. Again, over here on the measure it tab, I can get a segment. And on the property shelf, then I can adjust this a little bit. Okay, so what I can do is normally knock off the automatic position. And in this case, if it's running along the X axis, I might knock the X to zero and the Y to one. That way, when I click in here and drag, I can adjust this position. So I'm just gonna drag that down and I'm gonna bring this up in the Y a little bit and over in the X. And actually what we can do is Turn down the precision, just too much precision there. Okay, and again, just adjust this on the X and Y so it looks okay, and I think that wouldn't be too bad. Again, we'll have to give it a quick render to see how that's shaping up. And again, check this. Okay, so it needs to be moved down on the Y a little bit. I can move both, I can bring the text down, and I can also bring down both and maybe change the color. So I'm gonna give this a black just to match what, a, what we have here. Okay, and again, I can give this a quick render. And once that's done, again, check the output. Okay, so that's not looking too bad. It needs a small bit of adjusting, the same with this. 
what I'm going to do is mark in a couple more bits of furniture, maybe add in some more dimensions. So when you're happy with your layout, what we can do is come over to the render settings here. And it's currently set to an image size of 1920 by 1080 and it's at 50%. And that means it'll only render at half this current size here. So what I'm going to do is just click in here and drag to the left and increase that to 100%. So now my image size will be 1920 by 1080. The other thing you can do is come over here and you can see where it's set to PNG. You can switch this from PNG to JPEG to a TIFF to an open EXR or whatever it is you want to render it out to. And that's where that's controlled there. And that's really just it. The only other thing you have to remember is to have freestyle enabled to get that outline on the edges. Okay, and once that's done, what I'm gonna do is come over to the render tab on the measure it add on and click render. Now that takes a little bit longer than it did initially because we increased the size. So what I'm gonna do is come down here now again and click the output file and there's the render. Now you can see down here that on the image it has an asterisk. That means this image is not saved. So what you need to do if you wanna keep a copy of this is go to image, save as image Okay, just find a destination folder, so maybe your project folder or whatever. I'm just gonna put this on the desktop. It's also set to a PNG format, and that's what it's gonna be saved out to, so I can just hit save as image. Okay, and that saves it on the desktop, but otherwise, that's going to do it for this one.